The hunt for the next professional MasterChef champion is back on. And these six chefs all believe they have what it takes to win the title. Today, they face two challenges set by Judge Greg Wallace and two of Britain's best chefs, Monica Galletti and Michelin starred Marcus Waring. Competing with some of the best chefs in the country is, is a really daunting thing. To be noticed, you've got to stand out above the rest. I need to prove to them that, you know, I can do some good food. We need to find the cream of the crop, the best of the bunch. Who of these chefs can rise to the top? I can't wait to see what they can do. Monica, very good to see you. Marcus, good to see you. When I see you two, I know I'm going to eat well. Three of them are going to attempt your skills test, Marcus. Yep. Three of them are going to attempt yours, Monica. Marcus, what is your skills test? I'm going to give them a steak diam. It's a classical dish. It's a sirloin steak served in a sauce. Traditionally, this is cooked in a dining room in front of the customer. I would like to think that our chefs would know this dish just by going to Caton College. Oh, I do hope they can all make a steak diam. I'd love to eat three of them. <laughs> How long are you going to give them, Chef? I'm going to give them 15 minutes. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to cut off the fat from the outside of the steak. Mmm. Fat out the steak. The batting out of the steak is the most important part because it's got only a few minutes in the pan. They can't spend 15 minutes cooking a dish in front of the customers. They need four to five minutes. I love a steak Diane. It's a great test. Our chefs will be pushed to the limit because they'll get nervous. But our chefs should reach back and remember how to make a good sauce. Hopefully they cook the steak well as well. I'd like the steak to be nice and a little bit red in the centre. Now I'm going to start making the sauce. So we're just going to chop up a few shallots. They're not going to be in the pan along at all, so they really do need to be cooked nice and fine. But you want the pan to just come down in temperature just a touch, otherwise the shallots will burn. Ah! Mustard in. And the mustard is a big flavour of this dish. It's not as simple as it first appears, is it? Was it ever simple? Hmm. So our brandy goes in. Brandy being the key is the theatre. Flames going, maitre d' cooking away. Fantastic. Splendid. What I want to see now is the chef just start to play around with all the different flavours. I'm just going to put in some beef stock because I really want the sauce to be nice and rich. You realise we're going to get three completely different sauces here. They're not going to make one exactly the same as that. Now I'm going to put the steak back in. So I want to warm it up. I'm going to put in some bone marrow. Do you think they're likely to cook the steak and the sauce completely separately? I think the problem's going to be, Greg, if they decide to cook the steak whole and not bat it out. That's going to be their problem. That's smelling amazing. So. Absolutely fabulous. Brandy, bone marrow, cream and steak. And there we have it. Steak Diane. I don't expect them to give us a sauce like yours, but something close to that would make my day. I'm going to be willing them to pick up that mallet because it won't work without it. Let's get them in. First up is 32-year-old Simon, head chef at a gastro pub in Oxfordshire. I've been a chef now for 16, 17 years. But I love it because you're part of a team, you're part of a family. I don't see my own family, so we have a family in the kitchen. I'm a mixed bag. I wouldn't say I'm necessarily pigeonholed to a certain genre of food. You know, I'm quite adaptable. Even when I'm playing a board game, I'd probably say I'm more competitive. Service, please. I want to be the winner of it. If not, the board will go across the floor. Simon, welcome. You are the first chef on Professional Master Chef 2016. Yep. My skill set for you today is to cook us a steak, Diane. Okay. 
Have you heard of that before? Yes, I have. Have you cooked it before? A few times. This is a good start. I'm going to give you 15 minutes. Okay. Off you go. How do you know the steak, Diane, Simon? Get a few requests from customers that come in. It's not on the menu, you know, it's a classic. Simon, you've had five minutes. Thank you. So the steak's cooked separately, the sauce made, and then you're going to plate it up. Yep, and I'm going to finish off, yep. Mushrooms in a pan, then add those to the sauce. I'm never, ever going to tire of that. I just love that. <laughs> Bit of cooking theatre. You've got five minutes left, Simon. Thank you very much. Can we have it up now, please, Simon? All done, Simon? All done, yep. Simon, a good start to the competition and uh, a good attempt at a steak, Diane. There are errors in your method. You trim off the fat and you bat out the steak and the dish is all cooked in one pan. You have the basis of a Diane sauce. It just lacks oomph. Yep. More mustard, more brandy, and some Worcestershire sauce. Yep. That would have given this dish some real energy. The steak has bled onto the plate because it basically left the pan, rested for a minute or so. If you'd have batted the steak out, you wouldn't have the, the pool of blood on the plate. But it's a good start nonetheless. Thank you very much. It's the depth in yep. the sauce that's lacking. You know, the real knock in the mouth off of a great sauce. But you're on your way. I think it's a great attempt. And I think there's some great points to move on from here. Brilliant. Thank you very much. Keep it up. This is the most nervous round for chefs. And I actually think you made a decent fist of it, Simon. Thank you. Thanks, Simon. Thank you. What do you say? He's got promise, the lad, right? Yeah. He had a promise. Yeah. yeah. It was nerve-wracking when you first see the judges. I've never had to do it in a restaurant like the actual dish should be. Hopefully I gave a good attempt and the judges were smiling, so I'm happy. Next in is Josh, who's worked in kitchens since the age of 15. I'm 21 and I'm from Leeds and I work in a coffee shop. Quite a big part of what we do is pop-up restaurants and supper clubs and stuff like that, which I run and do all the food for that. I think we're the only coffee shop in the world that's had sea urchins and octopus and sweetbreads. I do like to work with some new ingredients and learn about them as much as I can. Because I'm so young, there's a lot of things that would be my weakness, I just don't know it yet, I think. To cook for someone like Marcus Ware, you know, that would be a massive opportunity. He's one of those that's on a bit of a pedestal for me as well. Being able to cook and get beasted by him would be class. How are you feeling, Josh? Nervous is an understatement, I think. Josh, I would like you to cook us a steak Diane. OK. State dining is traditionally cooked and served in the dining room. Years ago. Yeah, ah, years ago, a long okay. time ago. OK. Well, not that long ago. Long ago than, than I've been about, though. I have a dinosaur, so I remember it, OK? Oh, don't say that about yourself. <laughs> <laughs> Josh, I like you. That's all right. So, Josh, 15 minutes. Go for it.
Josh, you've had five minutes. Got five minutes left. Are you done? I think so. Well, you gotta know. Are you done? Yeah, I'm done. That's too rare for me. I would send that back. I've just bitten in to an enormous great lump of garlic, Josh. We, we need a little refinement here. If you're going to cook a steak that raw, it's just going to kiss the pan. The fat's never going to be cooked. It's just not going to work. The sauce it certainly lacks refinements. It's too heavy on cream, far too much parsley and the refinements of the shallot chopping, the garlic crushed with the skin still on, and the mushrooms, it's just not good enough. It's a very poor sauce, in my opinion. And a very poor steak. The fat, the gristle on the side, cannot be there. It's not cooked, it's not pleasant to eat. Everything we do from start to finish is with care, is with love, that's why we do this. Don't worry, everybody is nervous at this stage. If I was cooking it at home, I wouldn't have made those silly mistakes, so there's no excuse for me to do it now. We understand that. Make sure it doesn't happen again. Try my Step best. on from here. Josh, nice to meet you. Thank you very yeah, much. Thank, thank you very much. much. Off you go. The thing is, this chef has this great attitude mm. about him. You know, what you could create of this young chef and yeah. your brigade is, yeah. is quite yeah. exciting. Well, to be fair, actually, I was expecting to get beasted, and I did. So, I suppose you can say it worked out how I planned it, so then. The final chef to face Marcus's test is 37-year-old Mexican-born. Fernando. I've been working in a restaurant, which is in an art gallery in Bambridge, Northern Ireland. I'm currently the head chef there. We have Mexican on the menu to fusion between Northern Ireland and Mexico, so it's quite random. That's my food. Simple, tasty, and uh, sometimes it's spicy. It's very big for me to cook for Monica and Marcus. I will be smiling. You have to smile. If you're happy, food is always better. Fernando, I'd like you to cook us a steak, Diane. OK. 15 minutes. Off you go. Fernando, where did you learn to cook? My granny. It was always all about the Mexican food. Good for you. Have you ever had any classical training? Many, many, many years ago, uh, back in Mexico in, in the college. The places that I've worked doesn't really necessarily uh, encourage the classic training. And this is Take Diane, my version. 
All done, and you had three minutes left. Okay. <laughs> Fernando, you're not close to the real version at all. The methods are wrong. The estate Diane is a sirloin steak which is batted out nice and thinly and then the sauce is then made in the pan. It's a very bland plate of food, uh, unfortunately. I think the sauce isn't very good at all. The steak's okay, you've got a bit of colour on there. I hope that your next dish that comes up has got more excitement in it than that. Fernando, you clearly didn't know what you were doing, but I appreciate the fact that you have given us a, a plate of food. Thank you. He's got to do better in the next round. He's got to do better in the next round. He has to. <sighs> oh, disappointed. The nerves attack you, but we'll get better. Marcus, we've seen the chefs attempt yours. Mm. Monica, this is your skills test. What are you going to get the chefs to do? I would like our chefs to make us a pistachio frangipan tart with raspberry. I'd like them to serve their tart with white chocolate creme anglaise. How long are you going to give them? 25 minutes. I'm fascinated by this. Show me. The first thing I have to do is to make my pistachio powder. <laughs> It's really important with the nuts that you don't blitz them too long because you don't want to release the oils. That will split your mix. You just want it nice and dry. It's a powder, it's almost just a flour. Now, I'm going to make the frangipan mix. I have my butter and I'm going to beat that with some sugar. This has been weighed out for them. So no machinery for this? It's a small mix, so they're just going to make it by hand. By having it by hand, it's less chance of it splitting. That's it. I've just added my egg in. Just one egg? That's right. And then the pistachio powder. So that's the sort of what, So powder. it's almost like the flour, it sort of brings it all together. That's right. If those nuts have been whizzed up too long, oil will come out and that will split. If they're too big, then they won't incorporate the butter. Is that right? That's right. Next thing I'm going to do is fill the tart. Righto. So I've got a bit of raspberry jam, which is going on the bottom. Now I'm going to pipe the mix on. And that's ready to go in the oven. How long for? About 13 to 15 minutes. The chefs have to get the tart in the oven within the first five minutes, otherwise it will not cook on time. So they've got to move quick here. They have to move very quick. So now the tart is cooking, I'm going to make my white chocolate custard. So into the milk and cream vanilla pod, just scraped into that. Going to separate my eggs. So you're going to use two or three? I'm going to use three. Got some caster sugar. The killer ingredient is the quantity of egg yolk against the quantity of cream and milk. If there's not enough egg, it will never thicken. Right, okay. You get that wrong, it's over. And now I'm adding the mix back into the pan and returning it back on the heat. You've got to be careful, it might boil. That could then scramble it. Why didn't you add the white chocolate into the pan? If it's too hot, you get little lumps through it. It doesn't break down and it kind of burns. Here, the chocolate is just going to melt gently into the custard. Wow, everything is about gauging the temperature. So I'm going to place it up. Yeah! Whee! There we have it, a pistachio and raspberry tart with a white chocolate anglaise. That is delicious, really nice. It's going to take a very skilled chef to pull this off to that level. Lovely tart, very tricky test. Should we get them in? Let's do it. First up is 30-year-old Sheffield-born 
Robert. I'm the head chef, a 36 bedroom hotel in St Andrews. I like classic cooking done in a modern way, if that makes sense. For my first role as head chef, I won a Scottish Gas Rope over the year. I won two awards on the bounce last year, and I thought, well, someone seems to think I know what I'm talking about. So this, I tend to perform okay under pressure. You just need to focus on what you're doing, get it done, and hope you don't lose a finger or a, <laughs> or a leg in the process. So. Robert, have you had much experience in pastry? I started off as a pastry chef, yeah. And I was a baker for five years before that. Brilliant. I would like you to make for us today a raspberry pistachio tart and serve it with a white chocolate creme anglaise. Yeah. You have 25 minutes in total. You have to get your tart in the oven within the first five minutes. OK, off you go. Take me through the process of what you're doing there. Uh, so basically I'm creaming a butter and sugar like I would in a normal mixer for a cake or a sponge, anything like that. You've had five minutes, so that, that needs to... Right, that needs to go in, yeah. That's about seven minutes. Seven minutes. All right, so you, you might be lucky. You must have made a fair amount of custard in your time, a fair Robert. amount, yes. You'd be surprised how many people can't do it, though. <laughs> so. Right, let's get your tart out. You've got about 30 seconds to get out on a plate. Ten seconds. Come on. Oh! Done. Done. Nick of time. Well done. Thank you. You attempted to make your pistachio frangipane in the machine. The issue was you needed to have the powder made up first. Once that all sort of went to the machine, it was not going to work. It had split in the machine. The tart has got the texture that it shouldn't have. It should be smooth, almost sponge-like. There are some issues here with your cooking. It's a nice flavour of, of pistachio and, and raspberry jam, but it's wet and soggy. I find your custard too sweet. It's something that you're taught in pastry, that's the creaming method, and you do it by hand. But to put it into a machine, that's just making life easy. So I'm not quite liking the way you're working. You have a point to prove, Robert, I would say, wouldn't you? Yes, definitely. See you later. Off you Thank go. Thank you very much. You know, I don't mind nerves and stuff, but he's a pastry chef. Technically, it's wrong. He's a pastry chef. It's so much pressure, so much pressure. You think you know what you're doing and then you don't know what you're doing. Terrifying. That's the only word I can use to describe it. Next is 33-year-old James from West Sussex. I'm currently sous chef at a bar and restaurant on the south coast in Hove. From the age of nine years old, this is all I've wanted to do. I couldn't see myself doing anything else. Nine to five would bore me. The food I like to cook is all within season. Simplicity is key. I've got to a point in my life where I've been put in the shadows and now it's my time to shine. 
Now it's my time to rise above the rest and show what I can actually do. James, I would like you to make for us a pistachio and raspberry tart served with a white chocolate anglaise. I love pastry, so fingers crossed, might have this one in the bag, hopefully, Monica. Off you go. Five minutes nearly up. You need to get that in the oven. Thanks very much, Greg. Phew! Why do you enjoy pastry? Personally, for me, one, it's the coolest part of the kitchen, but two, also, if you get it right, you get it right, and if you get it wrong, you fail miserably. Using whole eggs? Got two whole eggs and two, two yolks. Okay. So I've done a bit of a half and half. How's the custard looking? A bit thin at the minute. What's up? I'm hoping I've just caught it before it might have coagulated. Whatever it is you've got left to do, you need to now do it because you've got about a minute. OK, thank you, Greg. <laughs> mm. Ah, oh, Pete's sake. Ooh, it's all right, all right, cool. Sorry, not doing it any justice at all. All done? Finished. I really don't get what happened with the tart, why you flipped it upside down. Was it nerves? Did you panic? Um, panicked. Not going to lie, panicked. It's broken, which is a shame. The more you were fiddling with it, the worse it was getting. When it comes to making the custard, I was a little bit surprised at your approach, especially by putting a whole egg. If you'd have left that on the stove, those egg whites would have completely coagulated and that would have never, ever come back. Your tart is a lovely flavour of pistachio frangipan and uh, sharp sweet raspberries. However, you know, I know, that that tart is too wet. When you made the frangipan with the pistachios, OK, they needed to be a fine powder. That, in fact, is your flour, and that's why it's still quite a runny mix. Well, I was impressed by the way that you saved the, the, the custard. I know you're disappointed, I can see it on your face. You know you can do better than this. So I'm really excited about what's going to come next with you in the next round. Thank you very much. Thank you. Bet you a pound he's all right in the next round. I've got a feeling. You better be, I like him. <sighs> Feel dejected, made some schoolboy errors. I wish I could go back and do it all over again, to be completely honest. The final chef to take on Monica's test is 24-year-old Ellie. I'm currently working in a Michelin-style restaurant in Wiltshire. I'm currently junior Sue. We don't serve anything that's not correct. I've been a chef for roughly about eight years now. So I started in a little local pub near Plymouth and then I went to college and then progressed to where I am today. Service. I am scared about the skills test. My weakest section is pastry. I'm going to try my hardest and just see what I can deliver on the day. You're going to have 25 minutes tart and a sauce, please, to go with it.
four minutes have gone. Well done, you got that in within five minutes. Thank you. Brilliant. Custard is not a problem for you? Um, no. Well, I hope not. Have you ever been in a competition before, cooking competition? Um, yeah, I have this year in March. I did the Tuco competition, three courses for four plates of food. Did you win? Yeah, I got gold. seconds. Come on, quick, 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 quick. You done? Yes. Well done. Bang on time. Thank you. Ali, you work in a, in a very calm way. The tart you've made and the right methods, you made the powder and incorporated everything. Not bad at all. For me, it's the best tart that I've had today. The anglaise is very well made as well. You've made a beautiful smooth custard. You've cooked the tart beautifully well. The mix in the case is fantastic. It's just too sweet. Yeah. If you just pull back on some jam and some white chocolate, okay. you would have smashed it to pieces. All right. Great job, Ellie. Really good job. You should be pleased. Ellie, I think you've done a very decent job. I very much enjoy the texture of your tart. I like the texture of your custard. Thank you very much. Thank well you. done. Off you go. Thank you. Now that's not a bad attempt at all, is it? Not a bad attempt at all. <laughs> I felt sick all morning, but for Monica to tell me I had the best tart of the day, that was brilliant feedback. <laughs> Looking back at those skills tests, start of the competition, that's a pretty decent standard. I thought we had some really good confident chefs in here. Some highs and there's some lows and then there's also some who are going to have to pick it up on the next round. Everything can change between the skills test and the signature dish. I'm very much looking forward to this. I hope you've left the nerves in the last round. This is your signature dish. I think we've got some quality here and I'm really looking forward to tasting your dish. Chefs, this is your time to show off, show us some flair and cook us a fantastic plate of food. This is gonna have to be very, very good. So at the end of this challenge, three of you are going home. One hour, 15 minutes, let's go. Everything is resting on this one plate of food. Hopefully it meets Monica's and Marcus's standards. And it's better than the last round. It's just so much pressure, it's just like, thrown in a room with some lions and hoping they don't eat you. Robert, tell me what you're cooking for us. I'm cooking venison with poached rhubarb, poached baby beetroots, celeriac puree, coffee potato, and uh, beef stock reduction. Have you cooked this dish before? Uh, I have, yeah. And have you served it to anyone? Yes. And did they like it? Yes, they did. Did you like it? Uh, I don't tend to like my dishes. Um, uh, I'm always looking to improve them. Sure. You know, um, You're never so happy, basically. Never happy. No, that's great. You've got another expensive piece of kit out here. Have you got a reliance on machinery that possibly old-fashioned chefs w wouldn't have had? Uh, not really. I mean, it's still the same basis. It's just done another way around. It kind of takes a little bit of manpower in the uh, hand-eye coordination, out of it. What are you cooking in there, then? Uh, that's the celeriac puree. Get away. Yeah. <laughs> 
Seriously? Yeah. I have had a lot of celery rep purees in my life, but I don't think I've ever, ever had one that's been made like this. Yeah. So I am intrigued. Thank, Thank you, you Robert. Robert. There's a few things here that I'm a little bit concerned about. I'm watching a celery rep puree being made in a blender. There's chocolate oil going on the dish. And he's also got some rhubarb to go on the plate as well. I may not think these combinations sound right, but we have been surprised before. The cooking of the venison is vital. It's got to be lovely and pink. It needs to rest properly before he actually cuts that venison. Well, I think I'm just going to have to throw myself there if we want to stay in this competition uh, after what just happened. I think you just have to cook with your heart. I don't really believe in that practicing, practicing, practicing. Whenever you just cook in a recipe that is in your head and you know it's going to be right. Fernando. Hi. Hi. What's the dish? I'm calling it uh, a feast of the sea with uh, tamarind and lobster bisque with the chilies and lemongrass. I'm going to cook scallops, a lobster in a water bath with vanilla. The reason why I made this dish in Mexico, we love a fish. You've got a bisque, all right, with some beautiful seafood, but you're bringing in Asian flavors of lemongrass and tamarind. Yes. They're ingredients that you would use in, in, in Mexico. Mexico as well? As well, yes. Yeah. Anything else Mexican in there? Tequila. Tequila? Yes. Now we're talking. <laughs> Have you got a tortilla in there somewhere? Yes. This is quite exciting cooking. Good Thank luck. You. Thank you. Fernando is using a lot of seafood. This is my idea of heaven. He's bringing into this a touch of Mexican flavors. He's got dried chilies, lemongrass. I hope our chef has practiced this enough to get the balance right. There's a lot of beautiful ingredients on his bench. He's got lobster, clams, prawns, scallops, and halibut. And of course, he's got tequila. We know tequila can knock you out. I just hope this is a knockout dish. I do believe that I can hold my own in this competition. I'm pushing myself because it's not a dish you would normally do in the time, but it is something that can be done. And if you don't push yourself, you're not going to go far. What's your signature dish? Uh, rabbit, crayfish and pasta. My take on a lasagna. I'm going to make a crayfish velouté. You're making your own pasta from scratch? I am indeed, yep. Right, you've got an hour and 15 to, to bring all this together. Are you going to manage that? Yep, I've done a few practices and um, it's a dish I've done before in the restaurant. Is it sold well at the restaurant? It's flown out the door, so I'm very confident. Sam is using a pressure cooker to cook his rabbit. That's a very good technique for the rabbit. The pressure cooker will keep the rabbit nice and moist. The cooking of the crayfish is vital. And if they're overcooked, they become flowery. I hope he can deliver on the taste part because he's got some great ingredients here. 30 minutes have gone. I need to keep my composure. I need to keep calm. I need to really screw that chef's head back on. It's stressful, isn't it? If I don't do that, then... Yeah, home time. Please tell me the title of your dish. Cannon of lamb with wild garlic gnocchi, asparagus, broad beans, anchovy and crispy sweetbreads. And it's finished with lamb jus. Have you got a point to prove now, James? I'll go out today, I'll go out today. At least I've, done, I've tried it. So you're going to you know. go out fighting? Oh, I am. I am. Are we going to see the inner animal of James? If you want it released, I can bring it out. <laughs> it's up to you. I know there's one in there. <laughs> um, who knows? Yeah, maybe. James is cooking us a cannon of lamb served with deep fried sweetbreads. I really like the sound of this dish. As long as he's not overcooked those sweetbreads, that could be delicious. The gnocchi, it doesn't need flour. He's got to be careful in the amount of it, otherwise it can be tough. It should be very soft, just melt in your mouth. I love this dish and this dish is me. Hopefully my personality comes across out on the plate. Hopefully everything goes sweet. <laughs> what are you making, Ellie? 
I'm doing glazed turbot with verjou and cucumber butter sauce, sea vegetables, and I'm making a seaweed macaroni. Forgive me, Marcus, what, what's a verjou? A compressed grape juice that almost tastes like a vinegar, but it's all just ingredients of uh, grapes. Who inspires you? I would say my first head chef inspired me. He's taught me organisation, consistency, and keeping clean at all times. You seem very ambitious, Ellie. Thank you. It's nice. Just make sure now you just deliver a great plate yes, of food. Yes, hope so. Thank you. That's good. Thank you, Ellie. Ellie's turbot dish it sounds great. She knows what she's doing. She's methodical. She's organised. She's making a verju sauce. It's a classic French sauce that goes with fish. It's a very nice sounding dish. I can't wait to taste it. I doubt I've made a very good impression on them. I wouldn't have been impressed. Hopefully I can turn it round. Anything better than what they've just told me, it'll be a bonus in my book. What are you cooking for us, Josh? Pollock with chicken skin, malted artichoke and yeast. Is there something that's going to make this sound delicious? <laughs> uh, well, well, that's not a good start, but hopefully it's intriguing <laughs> enough to make you want to try it. <laughs> right, hang on a minute. I need to know, how do you serve yeast? So I buy fresh yeast, crumble it up and roast it in a really, really hot oven. And that's sort of used as a seasoning throughout the dish. I've wrapped my fish in kombu. What's kombu? Korean or Japanese seaweed. I really liked it, so I wanted to use it. I, I hope that it comes together and it works well for you. Yes, yeah, so do I. <laughs> Good luck. <laughs> so Jossie's taking some yeast to make a malt powder. It's a fabulous flavour. I'm just not sure where this fits with Pollock. I've had a miso beurre blanc before. It's very flavoursome. You need to be careful with the amount of miso because it's actually quite salty. I don't want Josh to be testing something that he's curious about on us. I want him to give us a dish that he knows will work and is delicious. You've got five minutes and that's all you've got. Two minutes, chefs. Come on, please. That's it, stop! Mate, that was, that was the worst hour I've ever experienced in my life. Nice. James, up you come, please, chef. First up is James, who's made roasted cannon of lamb, served with crispy sweetbreads wild garlic gnocchi, asparagus, broad beans, anchovy and goat's curd. Finished with a lamb jus. I think you've got some terrific flavours on there. I think your sauce is lovely. I love the deepness of it and I'm a real fan of lamb and mint. It's traditional. Your gnocchi is far lighter than they look. I'm impressed with that. I love your choice of veg. However, the whole thing needs a little refining. In a way, it represents you. It's big and it's beefy, and I think it needs to be a little bit sharper. With a lot more refinement, this could be an incredible dish because your ingredients are a lovely marriage. You've got quite a few deep-fried sweetbreads on there, crunchy coating and that soft centre. It's lovely. Thank you. For me, James, there, there's not an ingredient that you've put on this plate that shouldn't be there. The garlic flowers is a lovely touch. The asparagus and the broad beans are cooked well. You know, they do go well. So you've got a great start here. It's a great introduction to who you are as a chef. Over the moon to get such kind words of three people that you look up to. It's blown me away. I'm, I feel like I'm speechless, I'm not going to lie.
Robert's dish is venison loin on a fondant potato served with kale, wine and port poached beetroot and rhubarb, celeriac puree, nasturtium leaves, chocolate oil, and finished with a beef stock reduction. Robert, I don't really like your presentation of the dish. I don't see the point of stacking food. I'm never too sure as to why one would need to do that. The ingredients that you've chosen, they're not very well cooked. The rhubarb is just very sharp and tangy. The kale is just slightly overcooked. The celeriac, I was quite excited about your method of cookery. It hasn't really worked. I don't like the sauce at all. Uh, I think the venison's been cooked very well. The fondant has been cooked very well. That's where it stops for me. Learn how to make a proper puree by hand. Get the consistency right, the flavour, the taste, and then you can start playing with the machine and just throwing your ingredients in there to let the machine do it. I think you've got some good cooking skills. I think you need a fresh idea for this dish. And add a bit of sweetness to that rhubarb, because that is so tart. I feel like I've been hit by a train um, twice. <laughs> I've been better, so... Josh's dish is pollock cured with kombu seaweed, served with malted artichokes, roasted artichoke puree, kale, sea arrowgrass, topped with crispy chicken skin, roast powdered yeast, and finished with a miso beurre blanc. Uh... <laughs> I haven't said anything yet. I know, but you're making a good job of keeping me on edge by not saying anything. <laughs> I oddly really like this dish. I love the flavour combinations. I think the fish is beautifully cooked. The chicken skin and the malt flavour really do work together very, very well. And I, I love the misu in the beurre blanc. Beurre blanc, a very boring sauce that I think. You've given it some energy. You've brought it back to life. For a 21-year-old chef who's not really got a great deal of training to pull a dish like that off with that much flavour, good on you. Thank you. I think, mate, you have got to learn the art of smart modern presentation because if you brought those flavours up with a smarter looking dish, I think we'd now be hailing you a genius. I've never had flavour experiences like that before, and I think it's very, very clever indeed. Thank you. Josh, your dish, which looked like a car crash in the beginning, has revealed some nice surprises in there. The cooking of the fish is lovely, it just flakes away. The artichoke puree underneath really does lift this fish dish. Josh, I'll tell you something, we didn't see you come in, mate. I'm absolutely exhausted. Well, you know what Marcus is like, just a stern face. Felt like his eyes were going through me. My palms were sweating and then for him to go, like, we're good. You know what, best moment of my career so far, it was just, it was mind-blowingly good. You all right, son? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> That's belting, that. Simon has cooked rabbit, crayfish, and braised baby gem lasagna, topped with coriander cress, and finished with a crayfish bisque. That bowl looks really crowded. I think it could be a third of the size and be a starter. I have no idea what you're thinking when you're calling this dish uh, a lasagna. And I think you've tried to take a rustic classic dish and, and fancify it, restaurant fight, try to impress, and it's not impressed me. It's not a lasagna. I'm not sure why the pasta's there, because you can hardly taste it. 
the mm. crayfish has been cooked really well. The sauce is very rich, very intense. It's how it should be. It's comforting, which is what a lasagna does when I eat a lasagna. I think you could brush up the appearance of it. However, rabbit and crayfish, to me, are not natural bedfellows. And you've made that work for me. Some positives and some negatives. When I plated up, I knew it was too big in the sub bowl I had. But I'm happy with what I put up. Ellie's dish is glazed turbot with seaweed macaroni, clams, grapes, topped with sea vegetables, and served with a verjou and cucumber butter sauce. That is as pretty as a picture, and that's what I would expect if I was going out somewhere very smart. You knew exactly what you were doing, and I think it shows in the way you've presented the plate. I think that's a fantastic dish. I've had that sauce before, I've made it before. That's exactly how it should be. The fish is beautifully cooked, the vegetables are vibrant, they're green, the pasta's outstanding. It's a brilliant, brilliant dish. It, for me, it's a 10 out of 10. It's a really tasty fish dish. I think you've had a good start. You've shown good cookery, and that's what I want to see. You got very good feedback there, Ellie, didn't you? Yeah, thank you. You happy? Yeah, I'm very happy. <laughs> <laughs> well thank done. You. Thank you, Ellie. Thanks. That was horrible. Oh, Thanks. It. Well Cheers now. Amazing. Well right, who's next? Mm. Last up is Fernando, who served Feast of the sea, halibut, lobster, scallops, tiger prawns and razor clams, served with a tomato and tequila con casse, sea vegetables and julienne tortillas, finished with a lobster, chili, lemongrass and tamarind bisque. There are some big, wild, crazy flavours in there. Flavour of tequila, chilli, tamarind is too much for me for lobster and scallop and razor clam. The fish is so overcooked, I don't want to eat it. The tequila is not evident to me in there. For me, it's been overpowered by the amount of, of tamarind. I do like the crispy tortilla on it. Fernando, personally, I think the dish is a complete car crash. I don't think the fish is cooked well at all. Some of it's overcooked, some of it's completely undercooked, some of it's rubbery. I don't think this dish is good enough. It is hard, it's a bit frustrating. I'm a bit disappointed. I'm Latin, so there can't be sadness on me. For the first day, what a day, wow. If this is a taste of things to come, we are in for a hell of a competition. I think Ellie is a fantastic young professional chef. That was a, a professional restaurant dish. There's a young talent there. Ellie, for me, without a doubt, was the first chef that I would put through. Yeah. Can I tell you what I really didn't expect, who really amazed me, was young Josh. Wow, he absolutely nailed it. I thought it was absolutely a brilliant dish. He's done well today, and I want to see what else he can do. Robert, that came with the stack of potato, venison and beetroot top, none of us liked the dish. I think it's probably the end of the road for Robert. I would 100% agree with that. Fernando's dish was probably one of my biggest disappointments. The execution of the fish, the cookery was poor. He just had a bad day in the kitchen today. Now we have to make a decision between Simon and James. His dish was very big and bulky. Well, those ingredients, you know, were all meant to, to be on that plate. I quite liked the presentation, if it had been refined. Something I see in James that I actually quite like. Simon's made two good sauces today. 
I just didn't like his presentation. The pasta, I wish it had been pastry. I quite liked his mm. dish. For me, my biggest disappointment on his dish was the presentation. It was just massive. It's in the hands of the judges. It's my day, it's my day. If it's not, I walk late, leave my head held high. If I was to go home today, I would be a bit gutted after getting that critique. Fingers crossed I don't, but we'll see. Who would you be more excited about seeing Cook again? It's just not easy. This is the first day and it's not easy. Three of you are going through to the next round. The first chef that is leaving us is... Fernando. Thank you. The second chef that is leaving us is... Robert. Well, guys. So the last chef that is going to leave us today is... Simon. Thank you very much. Thank you, Simon. Good luck, Gutted, but I've given it a go. And I will keep pushing on and keep working. I feel a bit disappointed, because I know I can do better. But uh, life goes on. <laughs> it was the toughest day of my career. The best people went through, so good luck to them. Get on! Get on it! <laughs> you are the first of our quarter finalists. I feel sick, honestly. <laughs> For someone of my age to come on top, I was yeah, blown away. It's been a good day. I was really nervous at the beginning. Really good comments from Marcus, and I'm really happy that he enjoyed my dish. I've got this far now. I didn't think I was going to do that, so there's a bit of life in the old dog yet. Bring it on. Next time. Another six professionals fight for a place in the quarter-final. I've just filleted the fish and it's raw. I don't know who's more disappointed, you or us. There's flavour bursting out of that plate.